Hello, everyone, and welcome to this Spotlight webinar, Making the Most of CMM Data. I am Lisa Sterling, your host and moderator for today's session. Before we get started, I would like to mention just a couple of housekeeping items. We invite you to ask questions throughout the presentation by typing in your Q&A tab at the bottom of your screen, as your phone is muted during the session. We will address the questions received at the end of the presentation. Please note that this webinar is being recorded and will be available in a few days for playback. I would now like to introduce you to today's presenter, Tim Hogan, Vice President of Business Development for HiQA. And with that, I will turn the floor over to Tim. Well, thank you, Lisa. And thank you everyone for joining us today. Greatly appreciate you taking the time. Um, if you've seen a couple of our webinars, you've seen this uh, first screen before, but I went ahead and changed the, uh, the quote that's on here. And just to unpack why, um, it's a matter of changing the perception from what, what the software does to the benefit of, the, of our customers. So we save time. We make things more efficient. We help your um, team to collaborate more effectively. But what does that ultimately mean? <laughs> It was best said by Stefan from Jet Machine when he said, I'm getting more work in the door um, because I can get work through my shop faster. So that's ultimately what it's about. It's about um, making your process more efficient so your profit margins are better, but also about getting more work in. And that's what we help to do as well. Um, we're going to have some fun today. Uh, when we looked at who signed up for this particular webinar, uh, we noticed something unusual. About 50% of the people that signed up are current customers, and the other 50% are future customers. So there's a lot of interest around this topic from both our you know, current customer base who may be looking to expand their current capabilities um, and future customers to see if this is something that they'd like to consider. <laughs> so the neat thing about this is that it's a pretty short webinar because it doesn't take long at all for AMDI to work, which is a the good thing, right? Um, but being we have a diverse crowd, we may expand on a few areas to better explain the concept um, from both the new user standpoint and the existing user standpoint. So when customers implement the high QA 360 solution, um, there are really three different phases of productivity gains to be had. Uh, the flexibility in the system allows you to implement um, the first phase, the second phase are all three phases um, at the same time or even in different time frames, um, which alludes to why there are existing customers on the call. Uh, chances are you implemented the first phase and are looking to expand uh, to gain more efficiencies. So let's briefly, briefly review what those three phases are. So the first phase really is the planning phase. And this is where a lot of customers get um, the majority of what they need done, especially with um, uh, maybe, I don't want to call them smaller customers, but with maybe smaller shops that don't have a huge submission package need. They just need to submit it or compile an FAI and submit that um, with the parts um, to their customer. So we take the, um, the print, typically a 2D print, whether it's a PDF or JPEG or what have you, um, we automatically balloon that. And then we extract all the information from it, the linear dimensions, the angles, uh, GD and T. We automatically grab all that and put it in what we call a bill of characteristics, which is essentially like a big spreadsheet in a database. Um, but from there, we can build inspection plans and assign like uh, sampling rules, uh, criticality like CTQ or KPC or flight, flight critical, something like that. Um, we can assign gauge categories, um, but then we can, what a lot of our customers do at this point is they'll take this information and then uh, print off a, or not print off necessarily, but at least create a, um, an FAI document to which then they manually populate somehow, whether it's by copying and pasting it in or by um, you know, literally manually typing in the numbers, you know, in Excel. So that's kind of the first phase. And some, a lot of customers never get past this phase because it's an extraordinary productivity gain of, you know, 50 to 75% is typical from their existing process. But when you get to the second phase, 
we actually see the most productivity gains percentage-wise, or from a percentage improvement standpoint anyway, um, from the second phase. And that's because we can get the information back into the high QA solution and we can do things with it. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, take gauge management, for example. We can look at it, um, let's call it from face value and say, well, can we manage the gauges and track for um, if it's expired or if it's within certification or what the, the time frame is as to when it's due for calibration, the details about it. Absolutely, we can track all of those things. However, now that we have the gauge information and we have the requirements from the ballooning, right? The, the dimensions, what they were and the sampling requirements, we're going to get into data collection here in a second. So when we have the data along with the requirements and the gauge information, we can start to correlate all of that information together and make some actionable information for you uh, to help run your business more effectively. Um, you can look at a non-conformance report that's generated in the system and have all of the information automatically populated. What do I mean by that? Um, you'd have the requirement from the ballooning, you'd have the data from acquiring it, you'd have the gauge information, You'd have um, who measured it. All that information is captured together and not having to um, use a separate software to track it or to enter it in. It's already part of a database. I'm kind of getting ahead a little bit talking about the database, but I um, just wanted to uh, kind of paint the picture of that because we can also break it into manufacturing operations to where, you know, when you make a part, you don't just kick out a standard part. It's based into, you know, op 10, op 20, or maybe finishing and roughing and drilling and tapping and plating, um, different operations. And we can break out dimensions um, into those different operations. Now I bring that up because typically that's done by a manufacturing group or a manufacturing engineer as opposed to a quality engineer. So here in this um, section of production here, is where manufacturing comes into play and we see productivity gains on the manufacturing side along with the quality side. Because when we get to the data collection side, whether it's on the shop floor, um, using a shop floor data acquisition tool, whether it's the um, AMDI, which we're gonna discuss today, once we get that data back in, we can do something with it. Whether it's track statistics within, within it, um, whether on the shop floor or you know on the engineering side. Um, this is where the FAI was to build that FAI report directly from that. And you'll see that um, as, we, um, as we get into it. We can do things with it when we get that data in there. It's actionable data instead of, let's call it dead information sitting on a report. So, okay, so the third phase is where we really get into quality 4.0. So industry 4.0 is all about digitizing the manufacturing process. So in phase three, we help you to completely digitize your quality process and submission packages. So digital workflows, online form templates, uh, you name it. Uh, our, our quality production planning or uh, PQP application will help transform your existing typically manual and very paper laden process into an efficient digital database driven solution. So we are going to focus on the data collection portion of the 360 wheel, specifically the automated data collection. But we can never get very far in a presentation without talking about one of our key advantages. And that's simply the database. So our current customers on the call are already very familiar with having the database in a, in a centralized um, location on their network and available real time. But for future customers, the HiQA solution runs on a Microsoft SQL database on your network. So this is not a file management system, but rather a database driven solution providing real time access to your data for anyone in your organization who you allow access to it. So, all right, today we're gonna to be talking about AMDI. So what does that stand for? AMDI stands for Automatic Machine Data Import. 
um, just what we need, another acronym to remember, right? Um, but what does it do? Um, it provides the ability for any piece of equipment to send data directly to the database. No user input, no manual import, no copy and paste from the CMM report to the Excel form. It's another level of automating the process. And if you just wanna talk about CMMs, that's fine. Um, it doesn't matter what brand or style of CMM you have. The data can be automatically imported into HiQA, um, HiQA's database on, again, your secure server. So we are what's called software agnostic when it comes to CMMs. So what does that mean and how does it work? Well, it means that after, uh, after you run a measurement routine on your equipment, your software will output some type of report. So we're gonna take that report format and directly import it into HiQA's database. So no more copying and pasting, no more saving one file format and attaching it to a submission package, and heaven forbid, no more manually typing the data from your Excel CM, or from your um, CMM report into Excel. So let's jump into the software and show you how easy it is to automate it. This is, uh, this is actually pretty fun. So would like to show a bit of the planning phase. We're just gonna take a couple minutes here, being we have some time. And for the new people, meaning you have not implemented um, high QA yet, I'd like to show you just what that looks like. And if I go just new from drawing, and I'm going to grab a sample file here. So this is just a 2D drawing um, that, um, that we're going to see on here. Very standard PDF drawing, uh, nothing special about it. Uh, we're just going to come up here and say auto balloon and say, okay, now we support multiple pages and basic and reference dimensions. You can turn those off. Um, you can do a lot of different things. There's a lot of different creature comforts we're not gonna get into today. We'd be more than happy to show you in a private demo sometime. Um, but typically we start with the auto ballooning of it. And what this is going to do is analyze the print and extract the information from it and put it right down here in the bill of characteristics that you can see right here. So this information will be, um, again, automatically put into the database. You're looking in the fields down here. So that took, I don't know, 30 seconds or so. The entire print is uh, ballooned. And again, more importantly, all the information has already been extracted. And in the database, the requirement, nominals, tolerances, um, even if it's a multiple place, multiple place dimension. Now from here, you, this is where you can assign designators. Maybe if there is a KPC or a CTQ, um, gauge categories, if you want to identify how you want the um, individual uh, dimensions measured in process or in final, what have you. Here you can see what the sampling rules are and you can change those as you need to. Like maybe if I want this sampling rule not to be per lot, you want it to be per hour, per shift, AQL table. Um, there's a lot of different options here. So this is on the planning phase, the phase one, to where you would um, identify all the characteristics that need to be measured and then the sampling plans accordingly. What a lot of customers do at this point is they'll come up to the inspection report and create using any template you want, by the way, this is completely configurable. They'll create this report and then here's form one, we'll go into form three. This is where the dimensional information is. They'll extract this out and then um, copy and paste the results in here. So this is just this, put it into an Excel form, a Microsoft Excel form, and you're able to just, it's Excel, right? You could type any information you want in here. Um, some of our customers put some automation in here or some uh, conditional formatting, if you will, of good or bad. Um, you can put the tooling in here, non-conformance number. So all that information can be manually put in here. And again, a lot of our customers, unfortunately, kind of stop at that level. But we'd like to show you what the AMDI looks like and how easy it is to put in CMM data. So this is the same part, right? So we have a balloon, all the information's down here in our bill of characteristics. 
Um, however, I'm going to open another um, file folder location here. And this is how the system works, okay? And what do I mean by that? So your, what I mentioned before is your, um, let's call it your CMM, but it, again, it could be an arm, a tracker, a, a vision machine, a key int system, whatever it is. Um, it's going to produce some type of file after it's done with its measurement routine. That file would need to be saved somewhere on your network. And it would be something similar to this, right? Hey, we're going to set up this folder location. And then what we're going to do, which you'll see in a minute, is how we're going to set up um, HiQA 360 to look at this folder location. And it's essentially going to just bring in anything that's populated into it. To help demonstrate this, I'm going to copy this. Let's see, copy. I'm gonna go in here and I'm just gonna paste it right in here. Now I'll come back to here in just a minute, but just wanted to show you this is exactly where this is right now, okay? So in our um, uh, database application here, we can see we already have eight samples of data in here already, right? So we're going to, this is how it would come in, all right? So we're gonna set up, a or we have a machine sync tab up here. And we, when we select machine folders, these are where you would set up the file folders on your network for um, HiQA to be able to listen to it to see if anything is populated in it, right? So here's the CMM data. This is the one that you just saw. We're gonna go back to machine data. And these are all of the um, files that have already been imported, okay? So we're going to go over to schedulers. And I said, they will automatically be brought in. It's part of a two-step process, okay? So we're going to go look at the folder location, this one right here. We're gonna see if there's anything there and we're gonna automatically bring it in. That's the first step. The second step, and that's actually, let me expand this a little bit. This is the files, okay? The second step is the data by preset. So this is where we um, interpret whatever's uh, there. We run it what's called through what's called a preset. And a preset is basically like a translation file that says, hey, uh, this is what this um, output looks like from the CMM, and this is how we're going to interpret it when we bring it into HiQA. Okay, so it's just a two-step process, and that can happen on a regularly scheduled basis. You can see the little clock there. We're going to force it to start here and by clicking start. So that's why we say this would just happen in the background to where uh, you don't have to you know, look at it or do anything. And you can have multiple files in here, by the way. You can not just have one file in here. So let's say your, you know, your frequency of inspection is um, you know, 12, uh, 12 minutes, but you're gonna look every hour to see if, the, if there's any data. Okay, so you can see that the file is gone now. Um, it, has, it went to look in this folder location. And now you can see it is in the incoming phase in our section or, or in the file process here. So this first step is done. So now I'm going to go and uh, manually start the second phase and just say start, are you sure? Yes. And this takes a, a minute or so to actually run through, but it's taking this file and processing it through the, uh, the translation file or what we call a preset. And then it'll take the information and what you'll see in just a minute is it'll automatically populate it right into, um, you can see it's processing right now, right there. And you can see there's no like part number, job number, lot number. It's going to grab that information directly from the file that it's processing right now. So that's why it's blank. Uh, let's see here. So yeah, it just takes a minute for it to process through. Okay, it's done now. Um, it says processed. It has a link now here, right? CMM, it has all that information. So we're gonna click on this link. And now we can see it right here. Uh, this is right back where we were before. If we click down here in our samples, we can see now we have a sample nine. Before I showed you that it was only eight were there. And now we're gonna look at sample nine and hit okay. And now we have our dimensions directly overlaid right on top of the, um, of the print itself. And we can see we have one um, out of tolerance dimension and the rest are all within specification. And if we click on this one, now, even at this point, let's say we're in the QC lab or wherever, 
we can add a non-conformance report right here and say, hey, this is a lot of information, uh, this is the non-conformance for this specific one. Maybe I want to assign this to a specific person. I can email it right out of the system. Fix this. You know, I hit send. Now, all that information I just um, did is also captured in here as well. Yes, I want to save that. If I look in the change log, here's my change log. This is 1122. This just happened just now, right? I assigned it to someone. Every, every step that you do is logged into the database. But also note, I don't know if you noticed, but when um, the NCR was up, it had all this information already because it's all part of the database. Who it's assigned to, if there would have been a machine assigned to it, all that information is captured right in the non-conformance because it's all part of um, the database already. We don't have to re-enter it into another system. But now when we go to um, create our report, this is the same spot we were before, right? Before we had data in here. I'm gonna say single piece report. And now I can look here and see I have sample number nine and I'm gonna create this report. And it's gonna kick it into the same one, the same report you saw before, but now my form three is filled out. It has all my actual information. It has whether it's passed or failed in here. Um, here's this uh, the out of tolerance dimension. And look, there's my non-conformance. It's linked and already populated in my report. So I don't have to go in now and repopulate my report based on information from my CMM that I'm gonna like copy and paste over something like that. It's already in the database, so it'll automatically be transferred right onto um, the report itself. Okay. Now, if this was part of a submission package, this would be saved in the database and um, could become part of that submission package. But if just your um, goal is to kick it out into a um, into an FAI report like we did you would already be done, okay? And that information is already captured. What I mean by that is everything that we do is logged and tracked in our reports. We can see our serial number nine right here. It's right here. And if I just select it, it's gonna open up the same exact form. So I don't have to take this, save it as the network somewhere, and then um, remember where I saved it. Everything that we do is in the database itself and retains in the database, okay? Um, I do want to mention one more thing. We have a few more minutes, but that's kind of just about it as far as how the data comes in from a CMM and how it can be automatically populated into the database and how it can be um, used to generate a report. The one um, other aspect before we get into Q&A that I'd like to bring up is um, we're actually going to be having a very similar webinar to this in a couple of weeks that's gonna be focused around acquiring data from your suppliers or from a supplier. And it's, but, but quite honestly, it's gonna be almost the same content because imagine if you would, let's go back here for a second, creating your report, okay? Just like we talked about before and sending it to your supplier and then having your supplier fill out the actuals. All right, then your supplier sends back this Excel form that you see here with the actuals and you can put it in a file folder and you can have a preset to automatically bring this form, right? This form itself directly into your database. So why would you wanna do that? You could run maybe statistics on your supplier's information before they even ship the parts. You could build a report from your supplier's information and um, compile it along with your information for your customer. So there's um, a lot of different levels you can do, but you can use the AMDI functionality in both of those areas, okay? So just wanted to kind of point that out as well. Um, but at this point, that's kind of just about it. Would like to open it up to questions and answers right now if we um, happen to have any. Great, thank you so much, Tim. Um, as Tim mentioned, go ahead at this point and type in your questions in the Q&A tab or the chat tab. We did actually have a couple of questions come in throughout the sessions, so let's go ahead and get started. Uh, the first question says, 
how could I transfer CMM data to report? Okay, that's actually just how we, we kind of showed it. Um, so you would um, bring in the data, right? So the machine data would come into the software this way after it has been populated in the file folder location here, just what we saw. We populated it into this file folder location, and then it was automatically brought into the database here, and then it was translated into um, the database so we could actually see the numbers um, here. Okay, the actual samples here. So that's how the information would be populated directly into um, the database from your from your CMM or VMM or what have you. Excellent. So I think you actually just answered the, the second question that just came in. It says, I'd like to see how a hybrid report would be accomplished, i.e. CMM and manual. Oh, oh, that's a great question. Okay, so when you bring in an inspection report, <clears throat> excuse me, you can combine this information. So this data can be entered on the CMM and it can also be entered. I didn't have this up. I should have had this up. I didn't think it was going to be um, um, brought up, but you can use like the shop floor data acquisition tool that we have. And I'll bring it up over here in a second um, and combine it with this information. How does that happen? Um, here's, here's an example, kind of a maybe see it a little differently this way, but this would be like a representation, that, for example, of the um, information from your CMM, right? A basic common delimited file um, that is that would be brought in. Um, and here you can join it with a sample um, information. So let's say there's that sample nine, for example. So I could bring this in and have it automatically correlated together. So you can have that done automatically so that when um, the information comes in, right, we toggled it to, we're having it auto toggle essentially to the next sample number. So the sample here shows one through nine, um, the next one would come in as 10. If we entered information on our shop floor data acquisition tool, it showed up as, um, I'll just pick one. I don't have a decent, sorry about that. Um, and it showed up as number, sorry about that. And instead of the, just for convenience sake, if it was uh, dimension number nine, or, or excuse me, sample number nine, it would be merged with the data from the um, uh, CMM to where they would both show up on this report. Okay, so great question. Yes, we can merge those two uh, bits of information. But in addition to that, if you wanted to, you could enter information in at this point. If this, if this was missing information, for example, this dimension here, this would show up as gray, and you could enter this information in directly over here. Okay, so great question. Okay, perfect. Here is another question. It says, if an inspection report is needed in a manufacturing environment, can you require certain fields, such as operator name, ID, part, station, et cetera, to be filled before you can proceed with recording measurements? Actually, that's done uh, ahead of time. So we'll go back into here. So we'll go, uh, this is the shop floor data acquisition tool, okay? So this is a browser-based um, application. We're just in Google Chrome. This is simply going to an IP address um, within your organization, not external, okay? So when we go into any job that's in the system already, we can look for job number, customer name, project name. And when, let's go into this order, for example. Um, and I'm doing this um, purposely to kind of show you something. So if we look in here and I'm going to enter data in here, right? I have the, the flatness, or I shouldn't use a flatness for this here. Let's use a, a linear dimension, right? I have the requirements here. But if we look up at the top here, we already have what sample number we're using. We know what lot number, we know the job number, we know the part number, um, and we know the dimension number. So we already have all that information similar to what you're requesting to say, hey, can we mandate that they put this information in? 
And I guess my, my point to you is they already have that information. It's already populated in here because it's part of the database. This job would have had to have been created already for them um, out on the shop floor to be able to see it, right? To see what the requirements are. If they are, <clears throat> excuse me, if they're in a specific manufacturing operation, this in manufacturing operation was already built in the main system. Um, so they, this is all that they can see. So when you're asking, can we force it? Um, it has to be there for them to even be able to see it. So, they, so it would naturally be kind of forced. In addition to that, you can also have them, um, I, sh I shouldn't say make them, but they can uh, put the tool and gauge number th that they're using for this measurement right here. So this is how all this information is tied together, right? We said that the, um, the gauge information, the actual information, the requirement, all that is tied together. Well, all of that is entered right here. I was logged in. I was, um, it has the job number, the lot number. It has all of that information already captured in here. Um, so anyway, sorry if I kind of went off on a tangent there, but it, it would have all of that information before they could even enter it into the system. Okay, great. We're getting a few more questions coming in if, if we have the time. It says, uh, if a dimension is measured on the CMM at an operation on the floor, will you be able to see it later in operations? For example, it was measured at OP10 shop floor and OP40 quality. Yes, you can do one of two things. You can identify that um, as the at the operation level to where, um, why would you do this? I'm gonna answer this in two different ways. So let's say on the operation level, there was an adjusted nominal. Right, maybe you wanted to leave stock on it, so there's more material there. You can measure that, you know, on the CMM if you have it that way, and uh, retain that information for that specific operation. Okay, kind of keep it mutually exclusive. You can also have that information be put into the finished part. Okay, so the finished dimension, so it would show up on the finished report at the end, um, or you could you could kind of share it or keep it mutually exclusive. So you can kind of do either one, but if you're talking about having a um, like one part program for let's call it op 40 and then another part program, maybe in QC for the finished part and keeping those different. Absolutely. You can do that too. That's very easy to do in the system to um, separate out the, the operation level data from the finished requirement data. Great question. Okay, great. Here's another question. It says, if you need to take measurements at different stages of a part being manufactured, for example, station one takes X measurements and then station two takes uh -huh. Y measurements, both with different operators, can the report be continued through these processes? Yes. Yep. So as it's being brought, oops, wrong button. Sorry about that. Well, no, actually. So as it's being brought in, and I bring this, this isn't how you would do it, but I just bring this up as an example um, for where you can um, uh, kind of sort this information because you're gonna bring information in at the different levels, but I'm assuming based on your question, you want them compiled all into the same report at the end. And, and yes, you can do that, right? So you're gonna identify what sample you want this all brought in at and at what operation, right? So you have the, infor the, the information for the operation itself and what sample it's tied to so you can append that um, the report with the data from different operations, so it is all compiled into the same um, same report at the end. Okay, see so right here. You can you wouldn't want to overwrite, right? <laughs> That's the last thing you'd want to do. Um, then you'd have the second operation overwrite the first operation. That would be bad. So yes, we can do what you're talking about. And I just wanted to bring this up again. This isn't where you do it but just know that there's a lot of flexibility in what we can do with the data once we get it back into the database. Excellent, okay. Let's conclude with this one final question. Okay. It says, do you work with specific CMM types or do you work with anything? Anything, uh, anything. And just to, to kind of further expound on that. So, um, Let's go back in here. So the file I brought in was this file itself, right? This is the one I copied and pasted into the folder. If we just open this up, 
this is just a generic, this is very, very generic, but like a generic CMM output kind of file, right? A comma delimited file, dimension type, nominals, tolerances, you know, actual information here. Um, this is just a, a generic type of document that's usually able to be provided by some type of um, uh, CMM software, whether it's CMM Manager, PC Demos, uh, Calypso, um, you know, MeasureMind, something can output, usually any of those can output some type of common delimited file or an Excel file, something along those lines. And we can map that information into HiQA so that that way we can um, create it to be actionable inside the database. Um, one thing I forgot to mention is that once it's in the database here, we can also by simple, how do I do this? Let me do that. By simply clicking on SPC, as we enter information in and enter those additional samples, we can also track SPC right here. Obviously I'm bringing in the same file so it doesn't show any trending or anything, um, but we can look at this information as it's being brought in. Now this is important on the supplier side too. But if you're doing this like on operation level out on the floor, maybe you want to track SPC on it. So as the samples are imported and brought in automatically in the background, you can also track SPC to make sure if um, to make sure they're you know within range, within tolerance, within your control limits, um, whatever you want them to be. So um, hopefully that answers your question. Okay, perfect. Thanks so much, Tim, for sharing your expertise with us and to the audience for spending the time. Um, as Tim mentioned, we do hold these sessions frequently, typically monthly. So keep an eye on your email box for the next session invite. We hope that you can join. Um, if any questions come to mind following the session, feel free to reach out to us at any time. Tim has put our contact information as well as his, his direct email up here on the screen. And we hope you enjoy the rest of the day. I will be sending this recording out shortly if you'd like to watch it again or share with your colleagues. Thanks so much, everyone, for joining. Take care. Thanks, everyone.